Hello everyone, Toby from AbletonDrummer.com here. I want to show you how you can set up your FCB 1010 foot controller to control multiple things in Ableton Live quick and easy. Uh, let me just show you what I mean here. So I have, for example, in preset number zero, I got this Max for Live device here and I can control different things. For example, I can start the transport. Let's switch the metronome on and off. So I can do this via number two here and you can see this, it's reflecting this on the, um, and there we go, bomb. On the max for life device itself, I can cycle through scenes or select scenes to fire them. So for example, I can go down, I can go up, I can select different markers to shoot, I can shoot scenes in here. And now the beauty is, let me show you and explain this via the different markers and locations I got here. I could set up um, different presets on what the pedal should actually trigger. So usually I bind to only 10 um, messages here. I can send 10 things I can map up. But for example, if I now hit number nine and I have marker one set up here, locator one, the playhead is jumping to number um, marker one. If I go one preset up, I'm currently in preset zero. If I go one preset up here now, I have different things being set up here. So the same pedal now will jump to marker two. So you have a lot of things you can set up for each pedal here and the same works for the pedals here as well. So for example, my first pedal um, is now controlling the uh, reverb or the send A here on the reverb track. If I go down one preset, it's controlling the track volume. You can automate this or you can um, like the preset change or you can use the pedals here as well. We got two different modes. I'm going to explain this later. So now if I change this here and hit number nine, you can see it's um, automatically changing to the preset slot I'm selecting on here. So I'm now selecting uh, via the up and down on the FCB. I'm now selecting preset zero. Visually it still say, stays on number one, but as soon as I trigger an action here, it will jump to the right uh, preset I'm selecting here. Okay, so let me explain how this works and how you can set this up in detail. This video is going to be quite long because I'm going through every step here. So I hope you got the idea now. You have the FCB 1010, you connect it to Ableton Live, you send the MIDI over and you send this into my max for life plugin, which is available. Um, there is a link available to buy. There is a link in the video description here. Max for life um, plugins do need max for life to run. Max for life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. If you don't have Max for Life yet, but if you want to check it out, you can always get the free trial, the free Ableton Life Suite trial, buy my device, set it all up, and then decide if it's worth for your use case if you want to make the investment to get Max for Life. Okay, so let me show you how that works. So we uh, first gonna stay in the mode follow pedal up and down. You got those two modes, but let's start with this one so we can uh, understand this in detail here. So let's clean out and this would be the first one I can show you. We're going to clean out the different mappings I made already here and I can just click on C for clean and then the mapping um, I made on those presets are gonna get cleared. Okay, so let's start at preset number zero. Let's make sure we are on zero here as well. So if I select zero, all fine. Okay, so first of all, obviously you need to make a MIDI cable connection from your FCB to your computer. So I'm using a 
uh, five pin then MIDI to USB converter here. So the five pin then MIDI is plugged in into my MIDI out on my FCB 1010 and connected to my computer. So um, this cable here is called, and we can see this in the link tempo MIDI section here. It's a USB UNO MIDI interface, and that's what I'm using. You, Most people do have a five pin MIDI in uh, on their external sound card here already. So you might just need a normal MIDI cable here to be able to connect the FCB 1010 to your computer. So in your preferences, in your Ableton Live MIDI preferences, you need to go to Link Tempo MIDI and you need to select and activate the track in port here for the MIDI port you are using, you got your FCB 1010 connected to. We are just sending MIDI into a track and that's all we need and that's all the connection we want to use. I usually advise people to only use um, and activate the connections here they are using. Okay, so let's go inside Ableton Live. You just gonna place the FCB 1010 control max for live device on a MIDI track. This MIDI track obviously need to receive from this MIDI port here. So I select the MIDI port it's connected to, which is the USB UNO. Bam. I now need to make sure that my monitor is set to in because this track is receiving now MIDI and we can see that already in those little indicators here. So if I press something, MIDI is being received, but it's not being passed through and for that, I need to turn the monitor to in to have the MIDI passing through. And now I can see already my um, little boxes here are lighting up when I hit those buttons here. One important thing here, the factory preset, um, the FCB 1010 comes with certain MIDI messages out of the box. Those MIDI messages are not really usable for mapping, doing the direct native MIDI mapping in Ableton Live. You can change the MIDI mappings on or the MIDI messages, which will be sent out on the FCB 1010. If you want to, you can go down that route. To be honest, it's no fun. Uh, it's definitely more fun to use my device. That's my opinion. Probably not everyone will agree, but I would guess a lot of people will, will agree because you can use it out of the box. You just plug it in like I explained uh, before and now and then you're ready to um, to control things in Ableton Live. If you just plug it in, use the, di the, the native MIDI mapping, um, it won't work. You need to reprogram the FCB 1010. Um, Behringer doesn't... Um, that doesn't give you uh, an editor for that. You need to do this via pressing going into the menu. It's a lot of work. If you want to go down that road, that I, that's totally up to you. This option I'm presenting here is something which can be used out of the box. For this, the for my plugin, to make use of my plugin, you need to have the FCB 1010 being s set to its factory um factory presets mode thingy. So you can just, if you have done stuff on, on your FCB 1010 or if you bought one second hand and the MIDI messages are different, you just um, turn it off, hold number one and six, pedal one and six down, you turn it on again and you can see that it's um, counting down and it will just per default reset the FCB 1010 to its factory settings. It obviously will delete all the stuff. If you programmed stuff on there, um, then um, this will be lost because it's resetting its sweet factory resetting. So the beauty here is if you got a new one, if it's set to anything else, you know, it's quick and easy. Just plug it in. MIDI messages are um, translated to what you will need in Ableton Live here. So now you can create those mappings and let's start um, with some mappings here. So let's start with the pedal uh, switches. Maybe let's take number five because uh, I can reach that quite well with my foot, number four and number five. So let's say we want to trigger a certain scene or let's have a look into those different mappings menu in here. So you select the mapping or the function you want to control first in here. 
So you can play notes, for example, which is really exciting if you are doing some live looping stuff and using my one button live looper max for live device. This uh, I will explain this in a different video, which will come hopefully soon. Um, how to use the FCB 1010 to do live looping with Ableton Live. Just have a look in the video description. I hope you will find the link there soon or already uh, depending on when you're watching this. So this is for triggering notes. Um, we could map parameters. Let's start with this one. So let's say uh, you want to map the on and off switch of this uh, A reverb um, return track here. So um, if you touch this one, you can see that the naming here is changing. So always the last parameter you touched will be displayed as a name in here. So now I can go to my pedal five slot here. I just hit S for uh, sync or save and it's showing this speaker on now. And now if I hit number five, uh, you can see this is listening to that. And if I change this by mouse or change this via automation, it's always doing the opposite of what's currently the state is of this mapped parameter. Okay, so um, this is quite easy. Maybe let's do another one for, um, what do we got here? Scene fire and scene select. So we have two different scene fire or uh, different direct scene selections here. So uh, for example, scene fire um, is for firing a scene. So let's say we want to fire this first one here. This is one scene. So we got a menu here, which is showing up and it's giving us all the names of the different scenes. So I just can now select this is one scene um, and then map this to the slot I want to map it to. So let's say number four, I press S here. And now if I just, if we have a look on the scene view here, if I hit this now, you can see it's firing scene number one, which is called, this is one scene. Okay, so let me explain you one thing here. So let's change the name uh, scene one, changed name. So obviously I changed the name and in my menu, it's not giving me the new name. I need to refresh this or if I add more scenes or delete scenes or whatever, if I want to select the scene here, obviously I need to refresh it to read out all the scenes I got in here or different names and I can change this now and set as so obviously this will remember you don't need to refresh and remap this when you change the scene or when you change the order, it will always remember the right scene you've selected in here. So this is quite easy. Maybe let's do one more mapping here. Um, let's do a locator mapping. Oh, we got scene fire and scene select. So scene select would mean I'm just selecting a certain scene. So let's say I want to select scene, uh, this is another on this one here. So selecting a scene means it's only jumping to the scene, but it's not playing it. Yeah, if you remember scene fire meant we are actually starting this scene. Okay, so two different things here. I have another um, thing here, which is scene previous and scene next. So I can um, select, change the selection of the scenes here as well. I could set up global things like tap, uh, metronome, transport, record and so on and so forth. I got locator, previous locator next as well. If you are more into arrangement, that's something you want to check here. So for example, if we set up, let's take number 10 and let's say we want to have marker one being played here, locator one. So we select locator and here the same as well. If you create a locator, if you change the name, you want to hit refresh and it gives you a menu of all the locators you got in your set. So I select marker one here. I select S for syncing. And now um, if we have a look on the playhead here, it's going to marker one. Cool. So if I now want to um, have more than 10 presets here, I can go to my next preset here on the FCB 1010 itself 
At the moment, we are in follow pedal up and down, follow the selection of the FCB 1010 mode here. So if I'm now hitting something, it will automatically go to the right preset I got selected on here. So if I select, for example, preset five internally, the visualization will change as soon as I hit an action here. So you can see now we are on five. If I go back to zero, we got zero up till nine here. So in total, we have 10 different presets, you know, and as soon as I'm going here, we can see this is being selected. So let's select preset number one. I just hit an empty slot here to go um, visually change here as well. I could um, do this via those buttons here as well manually on the thing on the Max for Life plugin if I want to program stuff and not always have my FCB 1010 here. That's possible as well. Okay, so we are talking, we were talking about having different markers being set up. So now I want to have marker locator is uh, the Ableton term. The locator mark named number two, marker two. I want to have this set up to pedal 10. So it's the same um, pedal um, stomp, pedal switch stomp thingy here. But as we are in different presets, I can set up a different locator to be triggered here. So if I press S, I now have marker two being mapped. So if I hit this now, you can see it's jumping to marker two yes so this means if i'm in preset number one preset number zero actually it's called i hit this one you can see it's going to marker one because that's the one i defined in my preset zero if i'm going up on my fcb 1010 and selecting um foot switch or pressing foot switch 10 here bam it's doing the action I defined in preset number one and visually it will jump over as soon as you press a foot switch here as well. Okay, so we have all those different things we can map here. Map a parameter, I just showed you that before. Doing the A and B switch here, um, you have um, notes, you have locator, scene fire, scene select, previous scene, next scene. You can select previous locator, next locator as well if you're in arrangement. And you have a lot of global settings here like tab, metronome on and off, transport on and off, record, etc. And you can have all those things being set up on the foot switches here. For the pedals, and that's the beauty here as well, you can actually go into um, the foot pedal section here and you can see this is listening to the foot pedal if I move the put foot pedal down it's going up and you have those values you can map those values now to different things here as well so let's do this this is only um, the foot switches will only listen listen to the map parameter things here so for example if I want to control the volume here I just gonna touch this volume fader here and shows me track volume and I can now press S for the track volume here and now it's already mapped to my track volume here okay so this way this is controlling that um, if I now want to set something up for a different preset let's go to preset number zero and let's say I want to control the a b uh, the a return send um, knob here. I have to touch this one. I can see that in my action menu here, the A reverb is now being selected. I press S for mapping that to the pedal here, and now I'm con I am controlling this one with this same with the same pedal. So if I'm going up one preset here, preset number one, you can see now it's selecting the volume. If I'm going down to preset number zero, it's uh, controlling the ascent. So this way you can control up to 10 different things here with the same pedal. So there might be some things you want to always have being you again. So there might be some things you always want to control with the same pedal switch or with the same um, foot pedal, um, expression pedal here. So you might want to set up the master volume, for example, for um, 
all of those um, presets here. And even if you go like to whatever preset all the time, this pedal one here should always control the master volume, for example. So if we select the master volume here, map parameter track volume is now being selected. If I set this up for pedal one and I can now lock this mapping. So um, you can see my master is being controlled here now. So if I'm going to a different preset, all the different presets um, and all the different presets, always I'm now in preset number four, it's always controlling the track volume. Let's do this with a foot switch here as well. So if we, let's say we want to control the metronome, metro, let's set this up via pressing S and now we'll lock this via the lock and we can unlock it as well. Or we can lock it beforehand and then set up the mapping. So what's happening here now, I control the Oh, it's on number five, sorry, number four. I mapped it to number four. You can see it's turning on the metronome. And if I'm in a different preset, it's always staying on the metronome because I locked this mapping or this control to um, number four being um, in being present in all presets because I locked this. Okay, so obviously I can unlock this and I can go back to the custom per preset mapping I made here. Okay, so one more thing about the follow pedal up or the follow automation mode because obviously you, and that really depends on the use case. If you maybe have, um, if you're more playing with set arrangements and if you are in uh, arrangement view, for example, you might want to have like certain mappings changing automatically and not always changing the presets on here. Okay, so now the whole preset section, the internal preset section of the FCB 1010 can be switched off. So no matter what um, preset you are on in your FCB 1010, it will always and only follow the preset selection on the plugin itself. Okay, so now it doesn't match up anymore. So it's kind of like you turned off the up and down function here internally um, for that. So now always it only listens to the selection you're making in the plugin. And this way you are able to automate this quite Nice. So those are the two modes you got in here. One would be follow the pedal selection here. So if I'm going to number zero, I hit that, it will follow what is selected on your FCB 1010 via the up and down here. Or a second mode would be follow automations, which means it's only following the selection on the plugin itself and it doesn't listen to what preset you are selecting internally on the FCB 1010. So let's have a look on the automation. So we got two different presets here. We got this um, one uh, zero and one here. So let's set up an automation in session. Obviously you can set up automations in uh, arrangement here as well. So if we have a clip, if we turn the loop off, let's say we wanna select number one here. So you just go to FCB 1010 control, automate preset, you got select preset one here you got to set a breakpoint by clicking on the red line so let's call this clip preset one and let's do the same for another clip and let's say call this preset zero preset zero i'm still following the names of the uh, naming convention here from the FCB 10. That's why it's zero up till nine and not one till 10. Okay. So if I now go to zero and play this clip here, you can see the selection is going to preset zero. So all those action actions being shown here will be triggered because they are the current mapping. And the same works for selecting or firing this clip preset one, which is now automating a change of the preset here, going to um, preset number one. The same obviously works for uh, setting up automations here as well in arrangement view. So if we go to FCB 1010 control, automate presets, we can select the different presets here and you can already see you want to set breakpoints like this on the red line if we play this part here. So now 
three is selected and this will change now to number one just to give you one idea i'm sure automating things isn't is quite common known so you, you just go to the your arrangement you hit on the automation view and you select the fcb 1010 control preset and yes and there you go okay so visually there are a few things i nearly forgot to say obviously you can change the size if you want and if you need that quite big you can place the uh, max for life pop-up window here wherever you like you can close it you can even automate the open and closing if you need to if you want to watch this and check this uh, at some point um, follow pedal up and down using the internal mode of the preset selection via the fcb 1010 or follow automation here okay cool so i hope you're gonna have fun with the device i think it is the quickest way to set up the fcb 1010 to use with ableton live i'm not saying you can't set it up a different way there are always quite a lot of different ways again this is one thing i propose here which gives you a lot of flexible control you can even store and save presets let's quickly have a look in that one uh, as well it's a max for life plugin again links in the video description if you don't own max for life yet you can always get the free ableton live suite trial by my device and then check out if it's worth the investment okay so last point here i nearly forgot saving presets so we can save um, this one here now as a preset the thing is you can't save the whole mapping things because they mapping um for example we got here for the uh, speaker on a button which is uh, number four this one here so something is wrong follow automation and we need to go to bomb 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 preset zero to select the right one so if we have this uh, speaker on and off scene change this is the one number five is the one so if you have this one being mapped here this is an id which is mm, the mapping stuff only works for a, a set but all the other things for example the note um, will be saved global the um, scene previous scene next um, locator previous locator next and all the global stuff down below here the tab and the metronome those can be saved and stored as a preset so for example if you have um, let's do a few things quickly here just to give you an idea so if we have the let's set up a note maybe here let's set up some uh, scene previous let's set up scene next here and let's set up maybe the metronome and the transport playing start and stopping okay so now those things are set up for those five pedals here and i can now just say okay i want to save um, this part here um, fcb Upsala FCB 1010 preset. Preset. So um, I can now, let's close this for a second. I can now go to my user library, drag and drop that in. Um, you can copy the Max for Live file in your case if it's installed right. You don't need to copy that. Don't copy. And we're gonna have the FCB 1010. Where is it? Buh, 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 buh. Um, let's say copy from now ah it was in there before okay boom okay so now we have this fcb 1010 preset in here if i open up a new ableton live set i can just uh create a midi track delete the first one just for now set up my midi connections here receiving the midi turning the monitor to in then pull this preset on here and open that and you can see um, that um, it looks like I need to do some work on the naming convention here. Um, but all the different things are being stored and saved in here. So if I save this Ableton live set uh, and then the names will, re will be recalled in two lines here. So what I'm trying to show you is you can actually set up uh, different mappings and different controls for your FCB 1010. And then just drag and drop those mappings 
meaning those different controls you've set up here and recall them in your next Ableton Live set. Again, this wouldn't work for the whole map parameter things here, unfortunately, because this is not how Ableton Live's um, API in the background works. They are creating a, an ID which is set to your current Ableton Live set and it won't work like if you map stuff here. But for all the other things, um, the node and the scene next, scene previous, locator next, locator previous, for all like the global standard stuff, you can set up things here and for the MIDI nodes as well. So you can create presets for your looping. Um, again, I'm going to make a video on the looper, one button live looper, um, how to use it with the FCB 1010. And for that, the node uh, section here is really important and is really handy. Okay, so quite a long video. Sorry for having this so long, but I added chapters here so you are able to navigate through the different points here. To be honest, um, taking like 20 to 30 minutes to understand something fully saves you time. Um, all those little um, five to 10 minutes where you're trying to work out something. If you want to understand the whole concept here, you get a great understanding of what's happening here and you can apply and get ideas on how to control stuff in a much, 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 much more effective way. Okay, take care. Toby from Ableton Drama. Cheers, cheers.